So before we really dive in, I just got one quick question. Who's your favorite Joker and why? Let us know down below, we'd really appreciate it. Let's get a discussion going. And tell me why it was Joaquin Phoenix. Or maybe it still is. You know, try to defend. Now, I want to open this by saying I respect Todd Phillips. Now, I know that sentence might sound odd given the disappointing result that is Joker fully a dear. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to be funny here. And the vitriol that is being spewed his way. And we will get to that. But I wanted to start off by saying I respect Todd Phillips for the fact that he tried something different, even if, well... <laughs> the first Joker film was a critique on society and the healthcare systems that failed to help those who need it most. Even when a man is begging for help and starts deteriorating, saying, I am not well, they turn their backs on him. It was a great movie with a message, until the incel boys, you know, tried to turn the message and did all these memes and tried to claim it for their own. You maniac! You blew her up! Oh, damn you! God damn you all to hell! Joker 2, much like his predecessor, feels very stuffed with messages, ideas, and concepts. It tries to critique various things and stuff, but it, it doesn't feel fulfilled. Not to say that there should be a third part, but I mean, this film feels like it wants to speak volumes, but it struggles to even whisper ideas. The movie begins with Arthur locked up at Arkham and he is constantly being heckled and abused by the guards. And that strikes me as odd. Even though it's been years since the Joker riots, no one is scared of him. He unalived six people and, and nothing. No one is fearful. Now, <sighs> There's something there to be said at, at this was just a flash, a moment of time, but I don't understand this. How is it no one is scared of the Joker? I don't know. It's odd because this movie almost feels like he lost his spark. This man is not the same man that lit Gotham ablaze. Now you can tell me in the first film Arthur had no spine, so why should he hear? But I would say he snapped. He changed. He went through a character arc, so why are we reverting back to the original version of Arthur Fleck? He ended Murray on live television and started a riot that caused Gotham to have a momentary flip, a true moment of self-reflection. This is the kind of significant moment in a person's life that changes them forever, much like the birth of a child or the death of a loved one, those events change you going forward in your life. His first film was a come up. The second film should have expanded on the story or take him further, go deeper. Arthur didn't really feel like an active member in his own story. Things just continued to happen to him. The guards abuse him. He's going on trial and the lawyer tries to talk to him. He doesn't ask to be added into the choir. The guard does it for him. He doesn't ask to escape, which we'll get to that later. It's done for him. It feels like he's a passenger in this in his own ride. He's ruled as sane enough to stand trial, even though he clearly is not. The system clearly is failing and wants to make an example of Arthur instead of looking inward to see how they could have prevented him from happening and how they can help others. They seek to end their mess and sweep it under the table. And again, there's something there. This could have looked at how the justice system fails the mentally ill real world cases of men and women executed when it's arguable that they were either one innocent or two mentally incompetent to stand trial i'm not going to ask you to comment on capital punishment but again there is something there when arthur takes a cigarette from one of the guards thanks him and then gets slapped in the back of the head it doesn't feel like the same joker that ended someone on live television would take that it feels so uncharacteristic of this guy that we've been following also uh, for a quick time out when he wrote in the book i hope you get cancer i laughed i i was the only one that laughed in my audience but i i, I really did laugh now in this interpretation i also want to comment on harley quinn or harley quinzel or lee quinn however you want to discuss her she is meant to be that character she is seemingly the devil on his shoulder pushing him forward but this film 
doesn't feel like others. It doesn't quite capture their relationship. Now, I'm not saying it has to be a perfect copy of the comics or the shows, but putting together the relationship of Harley and Joker should actually be playing off each other and doing it well, which is something that we've never seen before. And I get Todd was trying to go for a fangirl follower in Harley. Maybe she was there that night. Maybe she saw Arthur defiant in a crowd. She saw his blood and said, I will follow him. There's something there. There's also something to be said about the interviewer who only chases headlines. Like those true crime novelists, which again, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm guilty of that. I am guilty of listening to true crime podcasts. Shout out to the casual criminalist, uh, Simon, you're awesome. Weird to see you without a beard though, but you're still awesome. I wish Arthur would have said something along the lines of, you're a brave man or an idiot. Do you know how my last two interviews went? And then we flash to Arthur killing the psychiatrist and again, ending Murray. This movie seemed like it was trying to be critical of how the media can shape a trial and put someone in the gas chamber. Even when it can be argued, they may not be mentally competent to stand trial. What responsibility does the media have to try and report on facts in cases when they're simply just trying to grab headlines? Again, there is something there. Harley is constantly pushing Arthur to be more and more like the Joker of legend, to be more of himself when she doesn't really know who he is. She pushes him to fight back to make a show of the trial, until finally, he agrees. We have what might be the best scene in the film, where Arthur confronts Mr. Puddles, and we see the actual damaging effects that being the Joker leaves on someone. When Arthur finally snapped, we see the damage, the human cost and its effect. Chema made a point and I didn't realize this. When Mr. Puddles first walks into the courtroom, the people on the Joker's side of the trial are laughing and taunting him. But after his heartbreaking testimony of how Arthur's actions affected him deeply, emotionally, mentally, he can't sleep, he lost his job, he can't work, he's always stressed because of what Arthur did. When he walks out, no one laughs at him. It was a strong emotional point and I wish we had had more scenes like this, going more in depth into the effects that Arthur had on people. There is something there. And then at the 11th hour in front of a jury, Arthur says he isn't the Joker. The Joker is a monster. It's a defense mechanism. The Joker's a murderer. Arthur is just as much a victim of the Joker. And this breaks Harley. She was rooting for the symbol of chaos and obstructing the order of things. She latched onto his idea. I'm an idea. But he folded. And so did her belief in him. There's something to be said about the sycophantic fans that love someone so much that it becomes their identity. And when it fails to live up to their lofty expectations, they don't know what else to do with themselves. She seemingly offs herself, at least I think she did. That leaves us a question. After the bombing at the courthouse and Arthur escapes those two dimwits on the stairs, is that the real Harley? I don't think so. Again, you can leave that to interpretation, but maybe that's Arthur's mind trying to make peace with things, finally trying to leave all that behind. There's something there. But then we have something sad. Arthur picks life, but he still dies being murdered by one of the other psych patients at Arkham. Arthur picked life, and yet he still dies. The system still failed him. We still failed him. It's poetic that Arthur dies as he lived, a nobody. Now, if you notice, one thing I haven't mentioned up until this point is the music. While in the first film, it had a solid soundtrack that worked most of the time, this film feels like a half musical and that's probably my biggest criticism of this film. Cards on the Table, I don't typically like musicals. I can if they're good, but I, it's not typically something I look for. So when I found out that this movie was going to be a musical, I went into it with an open mind. But it seems like a flaw that most of the songs are treading the same path of love, 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 love. Also, I don't think that there's any original music in this film, at least not that I could tell. It feels like a missed opportunity. If you're going to do something different and make Joker 2 a musical, fine, I will go there with you. But commit to the bit. 
go full Wonka. Have everyone do do choreographed dances. Have everyone sing because we know for a fact Joaquin Phoenix can sing. He was Johnny Cash. Lady Gaga, of course she can go. She is a Grammy and Oscar winner. Go for it. Go for broke. Have everyone in on it and do the thing. But it felt like you were scared to go all the way, Todd. And it's just... I don't agree with that. Bear in mind, I understand where Todd Phillips was going with it as far as music being part of the escapism and the psychosis of Arthur, but you need to meet us halfway. If this film is for general audiences, you can't close them off so much and have Arthur and his world embrace the music as part of it. You need to go all the way with it. Or don't. This movie's biggest flaws are as followed. It does not commit to being a musical. It doesn't commit to being a courtroom drama. It doesn't commit to being this bleak, introspective look at a broken justice and healthcare system that left Arthur to die. It doesn't even commit to being a Joker movie. On top of all that, some part of me wonders, did Todd have to kill the Joker for this duology? I don't know. I think the most unfortunate part is nothing really changes, which is probably the most unfortunate thing of this story. There's a quote from the first Joker movie, I hope my death has more meaning than my life. That would have been a great way to end this, but unfortunately, it's not. This movie had more potential, and I think that's why this movie feels more like a disappointment than anything else. It had the opportunity to go there, but it failed. And because of that, we have a subpar film. Now some people are going to say that this subpar Joker film is going to harm the legacy of the first Joker film. And the the amazing performance from Joaquin Phoenix in the first Joker film. I would argue he's great in both movies. The problem is not the acting. By far the problem is not the acting. The problem is the story. And the fact that Todd Phillips was allowed full creative control. The best authors need someone to call them out. James Gunn, Christopher Nolan, and Quentin Tarantino. Arguably three of the best directors in the game still. All three of them have get back guys. All three of them have a team that will call them out on their bullshit. And that only makes them better. Todd Phillips had full creative control and this is what happened. I don't know. Joker 2, I just wanted it to be good and it couldn't even be okay. We'll still have the first Joker, but this one, ah, it's a, it's a wet fart. Um, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10, and that's being generous, only because it gave me so many great ideas, which, uh, shameless plug here, sometime in the next two weeks, I'm going to release a video called The Joker Rewrite, where I redo the entire Joker Part 2 film to make it more in line, I think, with the original film and what fans may have wanted from it. So be on the lookout for that. Um, yeah, that said, what did you not like about this movie? Let us know down below, because God knows... There's a litany of things to complain about, especially in this film. But yeah, let us know down below. We'd greatly appreciate it. I'll catch y'all next time. We'll be seeing you, everybody.